Russ Crossan. So it's a real privilege for Ronald Blue and Company to be the title sponsor this year of America's Best Hope. I just don't know how to interpret Ray having 12 minutes and me getting seven minutes. So if, <laughs> if he was the TE of Ted, I'm like the T uh, of, of Ted. But in all seriousness, I think in just a few minutes, I want to just share with you as leaders some things to think about on your, on your financial life. So just look at the back of your program here a minute because you see up there five words, wisdom for wealth for life. Wisdom is defined as the application of knowledge in a practical and successful way. So the key is, where do you get your wisdom? Where do you get your knowledge? It can either come from the world or from God's Word. We at Ronald Bloom Company believe that the Bible, and you heard Ann say we need to read our Bibles, has a lot to say about money. So what we try to do is help people apply wisdom from God's Word to their wealth, that's your money, to their life. And we would say that a wise life is generous and purposeful. And then there's another meaning buried in those five words, wealth for life, which is generational. So what those five words relate to, and what we've had the privilege of over 35 years of helping couples do is apply wisdom for their wealth, for their life, and wealth for life, which is generational, teaching their children and grandchildren biblical principles of financial advice. Now, how does this relate to you as a leader? I'm convinced. Well, let me just ask a question. Do any of you in here have a problem with balance in your life? You saw Ray put up overwhelmed as one of the issues. Anybody have a balance issue? Is that an issue for anybody? Yeah, we all have an issue with balance. Let me put up a diagram. I'm going to try to give you one thing that you can kind of take away from the few minutes I have here. Like I said, Ray gave me a very few minutes. But on the left side of that diagram, you see the issues that you as a leader are trying to balance. Your church involvement, your involvement in the world, your involvement at work and family and all that. Um, let me ask you, as you look at the left side of the diagram, which two are in greatest tension? Which two of those areas in that circle are in greatest tension? Typically. Work and family, right? Do you ever stop to think about why? They both require the most time at the same time. When you finally get the big house and you have the money in the bank, you don't need it, and when you needed it, you didn't have it. It all seems backwards, right? Thus, the importance of dealing with your money. You see, right in the middle of that diagram is what we infamously call the five uses of money. You know, there's only five things you can do with money. You say, well, you don't know my spouse. They can do more than five things. But there's really only five things. They fit in one of those five categories, okay? So the, the, the reason I want to give you this visual is as a leader, you're trying to get some balance. You're trying to get some margin in your life. And I am convinced that if you don't deal with the money part of your life, it'll affect you as a leader because you will always be stressed out. I think your decision-making at your company or in your department or in your ministry or your church will be impacted. If your finances aren't in order, you'll be stressed and will be less likely to make the decisions you need to make to lead your company, lead your church, lead your department if your financial house is not in order. So the punchline here is you don't manage your money to have more money. I mean, my wife and I, you know, when I shared her, we, when we got married, we are going to be on a budget. When I, married, when I met Julie, I, I um, looked at her checkbook, and there was nothing subtracted. I said, well, what's going on here? She said, I know there's enough in there. Okay, so a little tension in our marriage early on trying to figure this out. But once she kind of understood that we're not on a budget to be restricted, we're on a budget to have more life, that was a real aha. And I would say to you that the reason you manage your finances and regardless of your income level, this is true whether you're a CEO or just a department head starting up. I, I, you know, when my boys got married, I gave them the gift of financial peace. That meant I gave them money to go to a Ron Blue advisor to get a financial plan done. They weren't real excited about that being under the Christmas tree, right? A box that said, you know, you know meet with this Ron Blue advisor. It was called the gift of financial peace. But that's what we did because here's the deal. What I, the one thing I want to share with you as a leader is that this money part sits right in the middle of your life. And if you don't want to get to the end of your life and have a mass financial capital, you see the right side of the diagram, financial capital, spiritual and social capital. You don't want to get to the end of your life and have a mass financial capital and not build spiritual and social capital into those that come after you. And if you want to have a hope to have any kind of balance in your life, the left side of that diagram, you've got to deal with the money piece of that. 
So as you're thinking about where you are as a leader, the question is, is my personal financial house in order? Because if my personal financial house is in order, if I have margin there, if I've paid off my debt, if I'm spending less than I make, if I diversify my investments, I don't have to worry about what's going on in the economy, then I can think more clearly as I lead my company. We also live in a state of tremendous overload, right? We just have an exponential volume of stuff hitting us, whether it's junk mail or restaurant selections. You know, when I grew up, you know, you couldn't shop in the evening because the, the stores were closed at 5, and you couldn't shop on Sunday because nothing was open. But we've just exacerbated the pace of life with all of our options. And so one of the things we do to slow down that overload, and I think what contributes to overload, is when our financial house is not in order. Julie and I get to, to mentor some young couples, 20s and 30s and 40-year-old couples, and as, as I listen to them talk about their lives, my greatest fear for them is that they're incredibly overwhelmed, and to a large degree, they're overwhelmed because they either don't have a financial plan or they've made bad financial decisions. So let me just encourage you as I wrap up here that wherever you are in your spiritual sojourn, start getting your financial house in order. That will help you as a leader. You want to make finances a non-issue in your life so you can be about what God has called you to do as a leader. You know, as I've gone through my career, I look back, and, in, and there's been times that I was really glad that my wife joined me with being on a budget, that we spent less than we made, that we were conservative. And so when things went up and down in the company or when we had to make global decisions for the company, I was able to think clearly because I wasn't being stressed by I've got to make a certain amount of money. So that's the one thing I want to leave you with. You're not managing your money to have more money. You're, having, you're managing your money to have more life and make better decisions as a leader. So it's been a privilege to sponsor this event. I know it's been great so far, and I know it'll get uh, better as it goes on through the day. So thanks for letting us be the sponsor.